Hey guys, today we're going to talk about an analog format, an analog video format. And what's exciting about an analog video format? Not a whole lot, really, except for this particular one has a little bit of uh, exciting quality to it that, uh, that other analog formats don't. And uh, so this is a JVC VHSC camcorder, but it's not just VHSC, it is super VHSC. And you'll see the little S here, right here on the side next to the digital signal processing, and you'll see it there written out, Super VHS. If you look on the bottom of the camcorder, you'll see the model number. It's GR-SXM260U. Now, of course, JVC is the inventor of VHS. They're the ones who made it happen. So it was up to them to create innovative products that would excite consumers and keep them coming back for more, and of course, buying newer and better camcorders. So I particularly was never a fan of VHS. Even when it was the only thing out there that you could record on, I still hated it. I was always unhappy with the, with the picture quality on it. And for a while, I videotaped weddings. And as soon as I could get a hold of a Super VHS deck, I actually started filming in Super VHS. And then later, when Hi8 and uh, Digital 8 came out, then I switched to those formats as the uh, as the you know the, the source material. And of course, the people that I was making the tapes for had VHS machines, so I would either put it on VHS or or Super VHS full size cassette. So this here is the uh, this is the compact VHS, and it is regular VHS tape stuck inside a little tiny cassette, as tiny as possible. And we can compare that to other formats that were used for home video recording. So there's your VHS-C. And then this is your eight millimeter format. And then later on came the digital video cassette, also known as mini DV. So you can see there's some similarities in size but uh, still the limitation of this little cassette was the fact that it could only record up to uh, 30 minutes at standard play and 62 minutes at uh, super long play, which means you sacrificed video quality to get more recording time. But here was the cool thing. You could take this little tiny cassette here and you could put it into an adapter and play it back directly in your full-size VHS machine sitting on top of your television set. So there was a convenience factor with this particular format. So you had the convenience, but you didn't really have the quality because high 8 was so much better and regular 8 was, I don't know, probably about the same. But in any case, um, you had that convenience of being able to, to tape your your kid's uh, softball game and then bring it right home and stick it in the deck and not have to connect anything. But then when Super VHS came along, then we added some resolution to that. So I believe this boasts over 500 lines of resolution with uh, Super VHS compared to the 230 lines, 220, somewhere around there for regular VHS. So. Comparing the size of the VHS-C cassette, which you see here, with a full-size cassette, you can see that the convenience was offered there in size. So no more hauling around that big old clunky camcorder on your shoulder. You could now hold it in the palm of your hand. So it was a pretty innovative product. Now the next thing to tell you about, about VHS was, or at least about Super VHS, was JVC decided, well, let's figure out a way that we can record Super VHS onto regular non-Super VHS media. Because what you would have to do to get the Super VHS quality is the tape itself would have to say Super VHS on it. And they decided, no, let's just extend the resolution and the technology to, to record on regular old tapes. And they called that Super VHS ET. And it does not stand for extraterrestrial. 
I'm not in fact sure what ET stands for, but maybe it's extra, extra, I don't know, extra something. So um, extra tape, I don't know. So let's take a look at this deck here, uh, this little recording uh, camcorder and check out its features because it is pretty special that it is a super VHS camcorder. And we're gonna just take a look at some of the functions on it. And there's the little screen that it has. And you can see there's an outline there around the frame to probably fit a bigger screen. So you could get the next model up and get a bigger LCD screen in here. We have uh, some controls on the top. We have our light control, which is blindingly bright. Digital effect, refresh, counter, uh, reset, memory. We have fade and wipe. We have PAE, which I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head. We have an eject button here, and then your controls for playback. So your play, pause, rewind, fast forward, and then you have a, a retake. And what retake would do is while you record, while you were recording, you could hold down this button and it would review the tape a little bit. You could let go and then it would go back into recording again. So you could kind of say, eh, I didn't like that last scene. Let's take that last scene off. You could easily do that with that button right there. On the side here, we have some more controls. We have, um, get up a little bit closer for you here. We have a menu button. We have a volume up and down, which is used for the uh, speaker that's built in. You can see the speaker right there. And of course you have your zoom control here. You have a five second record button. So you can make your videos even more interesting by just hitting that. And it would only take five seconds worth of footage and then stop. For those that are ADD in the audience that uh, didn't have the, uh, the watching span, to, uh, to watch anything more than five second clips. Over here is your control to operate everything else. So you have a manual setting here and automatic. That's for if you wanna actually adjust the, uh, you know, the focus on it yourself, change some of the lighting controls, you could do that on the manual setting. Automatic and then you have off and then of course playback. Over here on the side, this little red button there, that is your start and stop to cue it. And then here you have a jack panel that opens up behind this panel here. And you have your uh, charger that plugs in there. You have analog and, or your audio and video analog inputs there or outputs, I should say. I'm not sure if these are inputs. And then you have an S-Video connector right there. And S-Video was very important with Super VHS because it gave you a little bit better uh, quality than just regular composite video. So if your, if your television had Super VHS or, or S-Video uh, input on it, you could use this jack and get higher quality video from it. On the front here, we have, you see the light there and your microphone, just one. And there's your lens with your 700x digital zoom on the front and a full range autofocus. I will note that I am uh, making this video on an iPhone 6. So this will be my first video that I've made with my iPhone 6. And it already looks like it's doing a much better job of keeping things in focus without me having to tap the screen, which is something I did a lot on my previous videos. So. I hope that's enhancing your viewing pleasure here. There's some little stickers on the front that kind of give away some more of the features of this camcorder. You can see the Super VHS ET there, which gives you the SVHS quality playback on regular VHS-C cassettes. You have uh, VHS playback and uh, for easy VCR playback, you have audio video light. Oh no, auto video light and then you have a picture stabilizer there as well. So how do you load a cassette into this silly thing, right? Well, over here you hit your eject button and the whole thing here on the top is going to pop open if I can get it to do it. I guess we have to put it in playback mode first. Oh, I think we have to open this up. 
All right, here we go. Smart little booger, isn't it? It's not going to let us open that. So, can we look inside? Let's look inside and see what's in there. Ooh, very cool. So, there's a an entire VHS mechanism built inside this little tiny machine. Did have to tap the screen on that one. You can see the video head right there in the center of your screen. It's a half-size video head, which means it has to spin twice as fast as a full-size VHS deck head would have to spin in order to scan the tape properly. And over here, you got your pinch roller and your capstan and your uh, supply spindle there and the mechanics there to, uh, to pull the tape into the deck. So let's throw a tape in. There's some footage that I recorded right around Christmas time in 2014. And we'll kind of see what the quality looks like there. All right, so you can turn it around, look at your screen here. I'm going to hit play on the top up here. Now you see how it says TBC on the screen there? That would be your digital processing. So it's basically a time-based corrector. So it digitizes what it plays back to make it look better. It's not actually digital playback, but it's it's an enhanced view of what's actually on the analog tape, which is kind of nice. Hello, my honey. How are you? Picture of my wife there, sitting there on the uh, couch. So see how it says the, uh, or on the chair, see how it says S, ET up there, so we're shooting in super VHS quality on regular uh, analog tape. So, um, what's funny is I found this at Goodwill, which is of course where I find most of the stuff I make videos about, and somebody had already, and somebody just left their footage in here of what they had videotaped. I, I don't get it. It's like the second time I've picked up a camcorder second hand and somebody's home movie was in there. Like, come on, guys, take your home movies out at least. So there's a kid, uh, like doing a self recording here. And all I gotta say for you is And I'm So, yeah. Some of these older machines also had what was called flying erase heads, which gave you a very clean transition between scenes. And, um, I'm not seeing this machine boasting that anywhere on the side, but um, this particular deck was made in Malaysia, so uh, I would assume the quality is a little bit better, perhaps, than being made in China or in other place. We put it in, uh, let's go ahead and put it in record mode here. I'll put it in automatic record mode. Let's see what that looks like. All right, it's smart enough to know that the lens cap's on, so let's go ahead and take that off. You can see the pause there. And there's our zoom, which is freaking out because it's really too close. It's got a nice quiet zoom on it, and it also has a slow versus fast, so if you move your if you move your um, your zoom control just slightly, you'll get a slow zoom. And then if you just really nail it, it takes off and goes really fast. So that's kind of cool. And then we'll turn our light on and watch how it blinds everyone in the room. Not quite uh, as blinding on the subject here, but definitely adds. I'm using my iPhone 6 light currently, and if we add the light from the camcorder here, you'll see there uh, the difference. That is quite some kind of light there. So there's with the camcorder's light, there's with only the iPhone's light. So you can see it's quite bright. I'll turn it around and blind you here with it. There you go. All right. One of the best things about camcorders that you're not going to get on your iPhone or your Android is the fact that um, you don't have a zoom. 
and uh, they've really got to figure that out because there's there's nothing worse than when you're out somewhere and you want to zoom in on something and you can't because you just don't have a zoom or if it's a digital zoom then it's a really crappy zoom but uh, this one doesn't look that great does it, it keeps keeps going out of focus once I get zoomed in probably have to put it in macro focus or something your macro focus is typically a little flower icon on there while in manual mode you'll see that there's some extra information there on the screen about focus and stabilization how many minutes are left to record and um, of course my battery light is flashing telling me I'm almost out of battery and of course you can put a title on there it says happy birthday January 11th of 2015 which is when this video was made so um, it's a very interesting camcorder if you happen to be into analog video this would be a fun one to get a hold of just because for analog it does have really excellent resolution or at least much better than um, than regular VHS has so anyway thank you for watching this video I hope it was interesting if uh, it was please share it with a friend Subscribe to my channel, and uh, I've got quite a few more camcorders on there if you'd like to take a look at those. Some digital ones as well. And uh, leave a comment down below if you have a question. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.